What if I told you that Kuril and Caribou had a lot more in common than you might think? In fact, they're both primary consumers of the Arctic food web. The Arctic is a region surrounding the North Pole, including parts of Alaska, Canada, Northern Europe, and Greenland. Something that I found very interesting about this region is the interconnectedness of the aquatic and the terrestrial species, especially the marine mammals. Let's start with the first trophic level, primary producers. These are organisms such as plants and bacteria that get energy from the sun. They are the base of our food web. First is phytoplankton, specifically sea ice algae, and then is caribou moss, and then there's lichen, and finally there's arctic willow. After the primary producers come the primary consumers, which are usually herbivores that feed on the primary producers. In this food web, there's mussels, krill, caribou, and lemmings. After them are the secondary consumers. These are either omnivores or carnivores that feed mostly on the primary consumers and sometimes the primary producers. These are gonna include your sea otter, arctic cod, and ringed seal, as well as your arctic fox and your snowy owl. You may notice that some of the secondary consumers prey on each other, like the arctic cod being eaten by the ringed seal or the snowy owl being eaten by an arctic fox. The reason that those species aren't considered tertiary consumers is because they aren't apex predators. That brings us to our last group, the tertiary consumers. These are apex predators, primarily carnivores, that have few or no predators of their own. Here, that's going to be the orca, polar bear, and arctic wolf. Now, as I said earlier, the Arctic is the area around the North Pole, and it's actually a desert, so the resources up there are pretty scarce, especially when it comes to primary producers. That being said, most of these animals are what you might call opportunistic feeders, meaning that if their primary food source is scarce, then they're okay with eating something similar. One of the biggest challenges in the Arctic is climate change, in particular global warming. This is due to the release of greenhouse gases, which have been accelerated by human burning of fossil fuel and agriculture. Climate change and global warming have caused a lot of sea ice to melt up in the Arctic, and according to the Environmental Protection Agency, over 1 million square miles of sea ice has been lost from the years 1979 to 2016. With the loss of sea ice comes the loss of sea ice algae, which is a primary producer. And as we know, primary producers are super important to the ecosystem, especially since all the other trophic levels derive all their energy from the primary producers. On the other hand, the loss of sea ice also affects the tertiary consumers, like polar bears. Polar bears in particular tire out super quickly, so when they find themselves having to spend days swimming in between pieces of sea ice in order to rest, they can get exhausted and overexerted to the point where they might even die. The loss of tertiary consumers means that the entire food web will go unchecked and there's not going to be much population control. Luckily, there's already a lot of agencies and organizations that are fighting for the Arctic, like the Sierra Club, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the World Wide Fund for Nature, because they all work on climate change and specifically on educating the public. With that, we still have to try and protect the Arctic because it offers us a lot of provisional as well as cultural services, such as both commercial and recreational fishing and other recreational activities, such as hunting, hiking, and even just wildlife viewing.